Hey, it's Len. I just uh, wanted to show you the easiest way to import uh, data to books. Now, I'm assuming you want to create invoices. If you have sales that are happening outside of, of books, then, then you want to bring those in. So if you have that data available in Excel, then you can go to the invoices section. And I'll show you a second way that you might do this that involves some, some scripting if this doesn't cut it. But this is built in, doesn't require um, anything except you to import data. And so you can go to the invoices section, click on the three lines here, and then go to import invoices. Now at a minimum, you need the name of the customer um, that the invoice is for, you need a date on it, you need the invoice number unless you want books to create it for you, and you need the price of at least one item um, that, that uh, is going to be on the invoice. If you want to see all the options and things that you can bring in, um, there is a sample file you can download. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And let's open that up. And it will have the customer name, the invoice number, the purchase that purchase order is optional. A lot of this is optional here. You need a date on it. Let's get out of the way here. And then if you keep going, so you can see currency code. So because I have the Canadian edition by default, it's got the Canadian dollar as a currency code. And then it's got the item name here, the description. Those are optional. Quantity of one, the price is required. Okay. Now it might look from this file that you can only have one line item per invoice, but the trick is, I'll show you this in, in a moment. The trick is if you give it the same invoice number for two lines, you can have two items on that invoice and, and so on. So you just have to make sure that you repeat the invoice number, you repeat the invoice date, the customer name, and then it will actually create an invoice for you that has multiple line items. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump back over to books. I'll show you what that looks like now. So I'll choose the file. Now I'm going to grab one that I mucked with where I made two of the line items or two of the lines for the same invoice so I can show you how that works. So I made invoice number, invoice dash seven, the invoice number for two of them. So now we'll open this up. Now if it's not an Excel file, I imported a CSV. It's going to ask you what your delimiter is. This is always, um, always almost always going to be comma for a CSV file. For Excel, it won't ask you. And then here you tell it if you want it to create invoice numbers for you or you want it to read the invoice numbers in your data file. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And then here on the left, it tells you the books field. And on the right, you pick the header from your Excel or CSV import file. Now mine all match beautifully because I'm importing the sample file that has all these fields in there. Yours may say invoice date here and date there, invoice number here, INV, NO, or whatever your column is here. So make sure you've got those all, uh, all matched up. Um, the payment processing names here, they're basically going to say whether or not you'll accept that type of payment on this invoice. Um, you don't need to worry too much about those. And here's where the customer name is. Anything that's in red with a, with a star is required. And that item price is also a, a must have. So you don't need to have a description or a name on each one, but you have to have a price for it, which makes sense. Okay, and then if you're going to do this with this same type of file on a regular basis, save the options here so it'll use it again next time you import. All right, then you go ahead and hit next. It's gonna suck the data in and tell you, hey, we found two invoices in your data. And there are 10 fields in your data that we, that we didn't map in. So these fields, uh, they're, they're, not get, they're not getting used. So if that is not doesn't look right to you, hit previous, check your file mappings. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and whack the import button. All right, so you can see the two invoices got created, invoice seven and invoice nine. I took that sample file and I made the line I, and I made the line for invoice eight to actually be a second line for invoice seven to show you that you indeed can import lines or invoices with multiple line items. Okay, so there it is. It's taken all that data. It's created a nice looking invoice. So if you have the data available in that format and that's where you want it to go in books, that's the easiest way to do it because the import functionality is there. Um, you just need to do that as often as, as you want to do it. Now, it's a bit of a manual process. If you were doing this every day and you had a file coming somewhere, yeah, it would be tempting to write some kind of script that um, would automate that process for you. But this is built in, you know, this is built in and ready to go. If you needed to automate things further or maybe create payments. Let's say you had your invoice data and then in there it said what the payment date was, how much they paid and the method of payment. You also wanted to create payments all in one shot. 
then my you know tool of choice for that would be Zoho Creator. We'd have somewhere where you'd import the data and then click a button, runs a script, creates the invoices and books, creates the payments. Maybe you need something else to happen, like an email that goes out to the customer. Sort of as, as much of that process as you might want to automate, Creator gives us more tools to do that. Um, of course, it just it takes some time to build that. I, I just mocked something up to show you what that might look like. So similarly, you would import your invoice data uh, in here. So you've got um, import data, similar thing where you'd map the fields, but then instead of it going straight into books, we'd create a little script. You'd hit a button here that would run the script, um, connect to books, create the invoices, create the payments, send emails, whatever else you wanted to do, and it might tell you the results at the bottom here. Um, Creator makes this pretty easy to quickly put together what it would look like. The you know the heavy lifting on this is obviously the uh, the scripting behind it, which is not functional here, but just thought it might help to be able to see what that looks like. All right, so I hope that helps to uh, to answer your question on on how to get data from your uh, external system uh, in, into Zoho Books.